Yo, welcome back to Triumph.Vlog. It's me, Kyle. Today we're going to be talking about search engine optimization, aka SEO. Why are we going to be talking about SEO? Well, that's for a couple of reasons. Reason number one, my company, which is the subject of these, of these daily vlogs, is called Triumph.AI. And the company is AI for SEO. I make and sell a uh, artificial intelligence for companies to apply to their SEO efforts. And two, uh, the idea is that on a day-to-day -day basis, I'm showing you behind the scenes how I'm building this company and I've been working on some of the, let's say, core SEO logic uh, parts of the technology all day-to-day, -day, coding everything, like tying all the different, uh, different parts together. So SEO is on my mind. So I thought I'd share a little bit about you uh, what I've known, what I've learned in 10 years in the business. Now, this video should be applicable to you um, no matter where you are, maybe almost no matter where you are. If you're looking at SEO as a career, if, you, if you're wanting to enhance your company's SEO efforts, whether that's like you're in an enterprise or small business or if you're a startup or whatever. Now, I'm not going to be talking about um, links, title tags, well, maybe a little bit of links, but like super duper technical stuff that could change tomorrow. This is more big picture how to approach doing SEO and like how to actually rank and, and scale and then do fun stuff. Now, why would you listen to me? Well, first of all, because I'm entertaining and these are the, this is the best content on YouTube. And secondly, because I've been in SEO for 10 years, really professional for seven years, which in the SEO world, I'm like this dinosaur. Uh, it's a relatively new industry. And, you know, there's a lot of people, people call themselves senior in this industry. And in some cases they are when they've only been around two or three years. So I've seen a lot of trends come and go. I've ranked a lot of websites in a lot of different ways. So I like to think I have a uh, good understanding of the underlying kind of timeless basics. I've also, I've worked with uh, big brands like Staples Europe, Expedia, New York Times, Caesars, Travelocity, MTV, Viacom, which all that proves is that uh, I'm still somehow slightly employable. Um, the first thing I wanna talk about on, on really enhancing your SEO efforts or, or doing SEO at all is step back from the blogs, the forums, this and that, <clears throat> and really, you want to really understand the fundamentals. Now, I highly recommend to go back and read the original Google paper that uh, that Larry Page and uh, oh, what's the other fellow's name? I always forget. Sergey Brin wrote uh, when they were at Stanford. Go back and read that and, and understand the, the basics. Now, the fun, the fundamental basis of the of the Google algorithm is based on links. You see, at the time, back when they uh, first wrote Google in 1997, the major search engines were like Lycos and AltaVista, and these search engines were mostly based on the content on your site. And Google's big innovation at the time was they based their algorithm on how many websites were, were linking to your website and what the, um, I guess you would say, power of those websites were. So the idea is if you had a link from a website that had a lot of links coming to it, then your website must be valuable. It was kind of like social proof applied to uh, search engine optimization or applied to search engines and searching and indexing the web. Now, the thing is, there's a lot of hype in the SEO world. If you read the blogs and the news and uh, the, the Google updates, um, you might believe that the, that the algorithm has changed and that there's a lot of noise about that. Um, you know, paying attention to what Google, like super respectful. I love Google as a company. My nose really is itching. That's not like a lie tell. <laughs> no, I love Google and I respect Google as a company. They do some super innovative stuff and they've made the internet a better place. But listening to Google when doing uh, SEO is like taking uh, deer hunting advice from a deer. It's not a good idea. They have no incentive to give you accurate information. Now, the thing is... Uh, that algorithm was based on links 20 years ago, and that's a lot of legacy code. And chances are, if Google's still around in 20 years, the algorithm is still going to be based on links. I'll leave it at that. And uh, also, well, a couple of caveats. One caveat I would add that is a slight change over the years that as Google has gotten uh, bigger and more influential, like any company, they become more conservative. 
And as companies become more conservative, they take less risk. And in some ways that filters down into their, their search results. And I think we see that at times with a, uh, with a bias towards big brands and big corporates and established companies. So a little bit harder for the smaller guy in a way, depends on how you approach it. But just keep in mind that Google has gotten a little bit more conservative and there will, there is a incentive for there to be a bias towards major media companies, uh, major websites, major brands, etc. There's something to keep in mind as you do SEO. I also say to realize that there is a disconnect. Now, this is actually probably the biggest problem facing Google is that there is a disconnect between having an influential web presence and your search engine impact. Let me explain. Uh, PewDiePie is, I don't know, probably maybe the most influential uh, people in the Western world online-wise. He has uh, 55 or 57 million uh, subscribers on YouTube. If anybody should be sending like PageRank or sending web power, it should be him. But because, you know, PewDiePie.com, or I don't even know what his actual website is, isn't a big presence, he, it's hard for him to, to pass on web juice in a traditional SEO sense. And it's hard for Google to, uh, how should we say, index or to rank the influence that, that PewDiePie passes on if he, he links to one of his videos. Now that, the, now that the web has gotten siloed out into these major sites, Twitter, YouTube, uh, and Facebook and other social media things, there is a disconnect between the influence of, of, a, uh, of a linking site and let's say what it's, uh, it's search engine influence and it's actual real life social influence. There's something to keep in mind. Now, that was a little, bit, a little bit more of a tangent than I meant to go on. But the second thing, after you understand the fundamentals, is to start tinkering. You know, build a website or whatever website you're working on. Uh, set up tracking so you're, so you're seeing, you know, how your rankings are actually, actually uh, going. And just start playing around. Try different things. Test out your theories. Come up with ideas. Uh, whatever you have to do, just watch do something and then watch and see if your rankings go up or they go down and just start doing that every single day all right try something new every single day and see how see what happens to your site you're going to try a lot of stuff you're going to try a lot of stuff probably at first if you're new to the game it's not going to work it's going to take you a little while but i can promise you with anything if you keep trying you will find something that works now once you find that thing that works do it again, and then do it again, and do it again. Once you've done it enough times, and if it keeps on working, you have to be intellectually honest with yourself. And well, of course, the good thing with SEO, you can see it either goes up or goes down. Not much room for bullshit. Um, if you find something that actually and truly works, that is awesome. That's how you start really succeeding in SEO. So once you're there, you start scaling. That means take that thing that you did that worked on that page on your website and do it for every single page on your website or build out as many more websites as you can. And the way you can really scale, uh, depending on where, where you are career-wise, you have a few options. Uh, one, you can just cut out the other things and exclusively focus on doing that so you like free up more time during the day for uh, that kind of work. Hire more people to create more content or do whatever process it is that you're doing. Or learn to program, or, or hopefully you already can program, so that whatever you were doing, you can automate it. And the third path is, uh, is my preference on what I've, since what I've done uh, at a kind of large scale with my, uh, my latest company. Lastly, this is for uh, somebody, if you are wanting to make it as an SEO, as your career choice, one thing that I highly, highly recommend is to pick up another related skill set. SEO is a fine set of skills, but you're going to multiply your value if you can do something else that will also help build websites or help improve your SEO. Uh, copywriting, if you can write great copy, that's going to get more links, more social shares, more views, longer time on site, all these other ranking factors. Um, if you're a great web designer, it's going to help just have an awesome website. It helps people, uh, when actual real life people get onto your site, they want to share it more. Or uh, like I mentioned, learn to code, whatever. You need, if you really want to be a successful SEO, you need your SEO skills, but you need another like kind of killer app or another killer skill on the side to, to really succeed long term and to 
do original and, and useful and good work in the industry. And yeah, that's it. So thanks for watching. That's all for today. I'll be back tomorrow with another video on Triumph.vlog. Cheers, guys. Kyle out.